Okay, so the next uh, part is discuss with your partner what is capital maintenance? What does capital maintenance mean? Capital maintenance, what does that mean? That you need to fix something during the period of cutting the department. Oh. Discuss with your partner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk every time. So, what is capital maintenance? Ask your partner. <laughs> The name could be a little bit confusing, but the main word here is maintenance. What does maintenance mean? You know? What does maintenance mean? What does maintain mean? Do you know what maintain means? Don't know, yes? What did you say? What did you say? Maintain means to keep, keep going, keep doing something. So, capital maintenance is an expense, right? Can anybody tell me what kind of expense it is? Painting, fixing, right? Repairing, do you understand repairing? Those kind of expenses, okay? It's a little bit like uh, depreciation. We can use as a percentage of depreciation. Uh, I discussed that if we are doing the project in Brazil, should there be some extra risk for Brazil? If yes, how can we calculate that? Okay. So discuss with your partner, ask your partner and explain to your partner. We are doing this project in Brazil, should we calculate some extra risk or not? And then if so, how can we calculate the extra risk? <laughs> 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 
Максим отвечает, когда правильно слово, да? Да, он. This question was also on your exam that we did before, right? Did you get this question correct? Okay, so one down two. Yes. First of all, should we calculate some extra risk for Brazil or not? Yes or no? Extra risk for Brazil or no extra risk for Brazil? Yes. Just generally, why do you think setting up a theme park in Brazil is more risky than starting a theme park in France or the US? Why do you think it's more risky in Brazil? Brazil has less income than those countries, Brazilian people, right? Brazilian economy can change more quickly, okay? We saw that, like we said, there was some protests in Brazil about the World Cup, okay? So their people were out in the streets, businesses were closed down. If there's protests, then your theme park might not be able to operate, right? In that area. For one day or two days or three days, you can lose the income of two or three or four days. Okay? Brazil's economy could change suddenly, people's income goes down. Okay? They don't have the money to go to the theme park anymore. So, uh, how do we calculate this risk? Uh, Wang Dongjun. Yes, how are we going to calculate the extra risk for Brazil? We have to put this into a number because we're deciding whether to do the project or not to do the project. So we have to make a number. So how do we ch turn risk for Brazil into a number? Hmm? This question was on the test, on the midterm test. Do you remember the answer? What's the number? We have to make a number. We know that Brazil is more risky than France or the US, right? But we need to turn this into a percent, some percent, so we can decide whether to invest or not when we make our calculation. So how can we turn risk for Brazil into a percent? Do you know? No, okay, Intaken. How do we calculate the country risk premium? It's on the internet. Go to the internet and type in country risk premium Brazil. Yes. See what happens. Let's see. <laughs> that works. Maybe it will. Country risk premium by country. Country default spreads and risk premiums. The same link as uh, here we have Brazil, BAA2, 1.9%. Okay? So, anyway, on the internet, they have what's this called? What is this called? What's the name for this? What's this? Default spread based on rating of Moody's. Here they use Moody's rating company, right? So we find the default spread uh, based on the... This is for bonds, right? So what do we need to do next? In Taekwun. After we find this information on the internet, what do we need to do next? We can find this information very easily, right? So next, what do we do? Hmm? 
This is for bonds. This is the risk of the Brazilian government not paying back their money on their bonds. It's the 1.9%. So we're a company. We're talking about equity or stock risk for our equity investors. So we want to change this risk for bonds to risk for stocks. How can we do that? Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, we already found that for Brazil, the Brazilian rate. What do we need to do next? Cost of equity. Standard deviation equity divided by standard deviation of bonds. Yes, so standard deviation of equity divided by standard deviation of bonds. Okay, so uh, we are finding this standard deviation tells us the volatility of the equity index. So. If we have a stock market, the stock market is more volatile. The returns on the stock market looks like that. This is volatile. Okay? If we look at the bond market, the returns are not that volatile. The return can go up and down, the bond price changes. Okay? So which is more volatile? The stock market. Which is more risky? The stock market. Is the credit rating for stocks or bonds? We found on the internet. Moody's, were they rating the stocks or the bonds of the Brazilian government? Does the Brazilian government sell stocks? Can I buy stock of Brazilian government? No, it's not a company. They only sell bonds, right? So I have to change the bond to the stock. So the standard deviation means how much is this changing? How much is this changing? So if I divide the standard deviation of the stock market by the standard deviation of the bond market, I'll usually get about 1.5. It will mean that this is usually 1.5 times more volatile than this one. Okay? So, uh, multiply the country risk premium we saw was 1.9 by 1.5, and we have a percentage we can use. Okay, does anybody have any question about that? Yes. Yes? What's your question? Is that important? Final. For your final? Like yes, because it's also in this part of the course. So that yeah. means if you see it twice, it's important. So you should know how to do that. So we, we explained to them because I didn't understand. Okay, so first of all, we have to find the risk for Brazil government. So there is a rating agency called Moody's. They make a rating for each country. So let's find Moody's report for Brazil. If maybe I have to sign register, but I just type Moody's Brazil into Google, and uh, we can see that here Moody's is making some announcement about Brazil, right? So, for example, we can see a headline here. Uh, In Latin America, generally, the credit profile is stabilizing because there is lower growth and less vulnerability. Okay? Uh, Brazilian mass protests will complicate the fiscal consolidation efforts. Do you understand mass pro protests? Yes. Do you understand protests? Yes. Demonstrations? Yes. So, is Moody's going to make better rating for Brazil or worse rating for Bra Brazil? Because they have some protests. So Moody's writes down these headlines, and they decide what rating Brazil gets. The US is AAA. Brazil is not AAA. It's BB. Why? It has protests. It has lower growth. Okay? It, it has some problem with corruption. Okay? With Petrobras. Okay? Do you understand those reasons? Could corruption affect your theme park? Yes. Yes, right? Something could, they could try to close down your theme park or another theme park could open up. So we have a risk for Brazil that Moody's is calculating what is the chance of Brazilian government paying back the money. So you lend money to the Brazilian government, Moody's is telling you that they're not as likely to pay you back as in the US. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah. Who do you want to lend money to, the US government or the Brazilian government? US, US government. How much more percent will you accept? Right? According to this, it's 1.9%, right? 
If Brazil pay you 1.9% more, then you'll lend the money to Brazil. If not, you lend the money to the US. Okay? So we're putting that into a percent. Do you have a question? Yes, American refined standard deviation. Is it in Yahoo Finance? Uh, yes, on the Bloomberg terminal, they will have the standard deviation of all the stock markets. Uh, is it on Yahoo Finance? Let's see. Uh, standard. Uh, the Brazilian is the Bovespa. Standard deviation. This is the next we need, right? So Bovesta is the main index in Brazil. So we want to find out uh, the standard deviation, right? This is the Bovespa. So um, summary historical prices. Anyway, if you can remember. In the uh, class, we did some uh, exercise on finding the standard deviation, right? You click on historical prices, then you download the data to Excel, uh -huh. and then you use the standard deviation uh, in Excel to find the standard deviation, right? So it depends on the time period and so on. If we just look at the chart, we can get uh, an idea of the standard deviation. This is the 10-year chart for the Brazilian stock index. Okay, so look. Down a lot, up a lot, down, up, down, up, right? So if we look at the graph, it's going to be more volatile probably than the US or another country. Okay, the US is also volatile, but Brazil changes more. So standard deviation is just a number which tells us how much does it change. Does it change a lot or a little? Okay, uh, let's see the maximum. We can see that the Brazilian stock market grew a lot. If you invested in Brazilian stocks in 2000, it went up from uh, one, 2000, it, it was 1,700, and now it's 5,600. So in 15 years, it went up by 400%, right? Or even in just ten, eight, eight years, it went up by 700%. So you invested one dollar, you would have got back seven dollars, okay? But then suddenly it fell down, right? In the crisis, but not as much. So in this, this was a great period to invest in the emerging markets. This period, all of the emerging markets were going up 100% a year, right? So you were doubling your money every year. Brazil, India, Russia, a lot of those markets were growing at that time. Okay, so if you want more risk, you can get more reward. We talked about it at the start, risk is also opportunity. So if you want to make more money, you might, you want to take more risk, you'll invest in Brazil. You could make a higher profit, but you could also make a higher loss. Do you understand? So this is the kind of thing we're calculating. It's the same for Disney. When Disney are investing in Brazil, they could make a high profit, but they could also make more loss. So we want to find out what is the risk what is the extra risk of investing in Brazil? So we find the standard deviation of the uh, we find the standard deviation of the stock market. In this case, it's 34, and then we do the same for the bonds. We find the standard deviation of the bonds. Divide one by the other. We have the country risk uh, premium. Right. Okay? So we could also in Google search for the equity. This was for the bond, but we could search for the equity country risk premium. And also on the homepage of the guy who wrote the book, he has that kind of information. Okay?